Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're going to be reviewing the new Nidecker Cone Plus bind. I assume that's how you pronounce it. Cone, Cohen. I'm not really sure. Anyways, we're going to be talking about this three strap, two ratchet binding. I rode this binding at Copper Mountain on a sunny bluebird day, like almost perfect conditions. Nice firm corduroy, a little bit of ice in spots, hot pow off the runs if you knew where to look. And I rode it with my Telos Mike Rankwit snowboard and my K2 Thraxxus boots. So when it comes to adjustability on this binding, you have the standard flip cam. So you got three of those to adjust just the length of that heel and toe strap. You also have push down pin placement for the toe strap. You have two placements there. The high back rotation has four spots that you can rotate it to. And then you have your forward lean adjustment. Pretty straightforward stuff with this binding, even though it's got a third strap. So the big talking point with this binding is that it has a third strap attachment right by the toe strap. So your toe strap, you can set it, do what it need to do. But that one that connects the toe strap to the heel strap, actually changes the power dynamic of the heel strap. It can actually pull the center of the strap off your foot, relieving instep pressure and creating a more loose and surfy feel inside the binding. Now, if that's not your thing, you're not gonna like it, but if you're one of those people that has instep pressure, you should probably be looking at this because the way you dial that in, if you crank it down so that this sits a little bit more compared to the heel strip, it pulls that bottom part off the instep. So you're still locking in on the sides of the heel strip, but you're relieving that center tension point that usually crushes your instep. So those of you that have instep issues, that's what you're gonna know. Other than that, the straps are solid. You got a harder plastic on the toe, so it does stretch a little bit, but it isn't as forgiving as others out there. Then you have a 3D molded heel piece in there. This isn't gonna stretch, it's never gonna break down. It's just one of those ones that contours around the instep of the boot. So when it comes to the ratchets, I had three out of the four actually stick open on me when I was using them. With the front foot, that really wasn't an issue because after I dialed it in, locked it in, I didn't come out of it for about three hours, but the rear one, every now and then, it would stick, it would just stay open. When they were working, they climbed well, they released easily enough. I do attribute that sticking to the fact that these were brand new out of the box, they needed to be worn in a little bit, and as the day progressed, I started noticing that it was happening less and less, but it is something to just be aware of. This is actually a softer high back, there's a lot of give to it, especially where that cutout is. You can just feel when you push into it that there's just, nothing stopping it. You don't get that rebound that you do from other high backs out there. The forward lean adjustment works how you'd expect it to. It does its job, but overall the flex of that high back is a little more surfy and loose, which makes sense when you think about how that three strap design is built so that it alleviates that pressure off the instep and gives you a more surfy feel. With the binding flex, we need to talk about how this is a little unique. This has a big footprint on it. It has a bigger disc, so it's a little more rigid and stiff underfoot, but laterally side to side, it has more give. And then the straps, as I've already mentioned, are a little more loose and surfy. So underfoot, it's a little bit past middle of the road, and I mean ever so slightly past middle of the road, but laterally and through the straps, it's just below a middle of the road. It's more surfy, if you will. So. It's kind of a unique ride with it, but overall, it's a binding that if you need to be a powerhouse, you can be. It's just gonna flex a little bit more, but if you're more laid back and surfy, this is where it's really going to shine. So with the ride of this binding underfoot, I'd say it's more damp. You just see that base plate, how big it is, plus you've got this huge foam pad that just absorbs chatter. It really just lessens any vibration that you would feel. Then when you get into the straps, it becomes a little more surfy, so underfoot, it's damp, it's forgiving, but then on the top of it, it's very surfy. You got a lot of lateral play with it. So it makes it a damp surfy binding, which is kind of an oddity these days. Who's this binding for? The Surfy Cruiser All Mountain Guy. So here's the thing with the binding. If you have instep pressure, like I already mentioned, this is probably a great option for you. I don't, and I really like to feel my straps. So I ended up just having to crank this binding down to get it to perform how I wanted it to. Not exactly ideal, and definitely not for me. I would probably actually go with one of their other bindings over this. But if you're one of those guys with instep pressure, 
you should be looking at it. And I know some people are gonna be like, did it take longer for this binding to set up because you just got that extra strap in there? No, it didn't. Literally, I had this thing dialed in about two minutes and was on the chairlift riding. Seriously took no extra effort. Overall, it's a good binding for what it is. It's not the right binding for me, but I think the people that have instep pressure, this is something they should be looking at. Comparable bindings, the Union Strata, the K2 Lean AT, the Rome Vice. This has been my review of the Nidecker Cone Plus. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own a pair? Are you going to buy a pair? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this binding. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video. Mm -hmm.